Okay, welcome to this uh, first module of this uh, course on electronic waste management. So as explained in the introductory video, we'll be covering uh, diverse topics uh, within this course. It's a four week course. It's a smaller course uh, than the other courses you might be taking and you may have taken on uh, NPTEL. So it's a four week, but uh, again, uh, as explained in the intro video, the format will remain the same. There will be weekly quizzes. There, those who want to take an exam, they can take an exam at the end as well. So let's get started. So in this first video, we'll try to uh, uh, try to give you a, in, this is the, in the first week, the plan is to kind of give you an overview of uh, the different uh, components which will go into the course and we'll be looking at some of the basic definitions like what is an e-waste, uh, what, what do you, the categories of the e-waste, what is e-waste, categories of the e-waste, why we need to manage or uh, uh, like a, why, why we need to manage or recycle electronic waste. Then uh, it, since uh, I'm, uh, we, this is, uh, we'll try to focus a little bit on the Indian contest. There are a lot of information out there uh, you can find, in fact, several reports uh, out there in, uh, in the literature uh, we, when you look at uh, electronic waste, especially in a global contest. Uh, not much information is available in from the Indian contest and uh, as most of the students, I assume almost 100% of the students uh, in this course will be from India. So we'll try to find uh, what we have tried to do, what we have tried to do in this course is try to g collect some information regarding e-waste in India and try to present it to you in a summary form so that uh, it becomes easier uh, for you to understand what's going on in India, what are the situations in India. So we'll talk about MSW management rules, uh, the e-waste management rules, which is uh, we also came along with MSW management rules. We'll talk about e-waste generation in India and compare with the world scenario, how it uh, facts and figures. We'll try to estimate. That's one of the another thing. If you uh, if you have taken any waste course uh, earlier, or uh, you know that to manage something, first of all, we need to know how much is of it is out there. So in terms of electronic waste as well, so when we say e-waste or electronic waste, we need to know how much e-waste is being produced in the country, uh, any country for that matter, or if you are doing it for a state or for a city, we need to know how much electronic waste is produced, say for is in Calcutta or in Delhi or in Bombay or overall in Indian scenario. So how we get those numbers? So what what is so we'll we'll do a case study of uh, a, a study done in Kolkata. We did some study in uh, for the, focused on Kolkata in terms of how to uh, estimate amount of e-waste that would be produced from Kolkata in a year. So that once we have that number, we can we can plan. So if you want to have a recycling plant, how big the recycling plant should be, what kind of waste the recycling plant can expect. So for that, we need to know how much quantity. So there will be an estimation of. Uh, we'll talk about estimation of uh, waste electrical uh, equipment. Then, uh, like how much money is out there uh, in terms of uh, rare earth metals and precious metals. So you see precious metals, rare earth metals. How much money is actually there in terms of the electronic waste? Uh, then quantification. What about the health impact? Uh, there is a lot of informal recycling of e-waste is happening. So how in terms of the health impact? What is uh, typical health impact for uh, electronic waste? Then uh, uh, like a, how to do the extraction, we'll talk about that. Then uh, what is the present status of e-waste management in India and social, imp social impacts of recycling and all that. So this is just a uh, kind of, just to give you an idea of different topics we'll try to touch upon in this course. And this is, the, there are some more topics out there as well, but uh, in the first week and probably part of the second week, we'll be looking at these particular topics uh, uh, for now and then we'll go into how to do the extraction of the rare earth metal, what are the technologies out there. We'll also talk about the life cycle analysis part, uh, how to incorporate life cycle analysis in terms of the electronic waste management and all that. Uh, so in, in four weeks since uh, the uh, course is only focused on e-waste, we'll, we'll go much deeper on e-waste management as opposed to uh, if it was part of some other course. So, in, so what is what is first of all what is waste? If you have taken a course on waste management, uh, we had a NPTEL course last semester as well on uh, a, like integrated waste management uh, focused on smart cities. But any waste management course, if you have taken in your college or uh, be bachelor's degree, master's degree, you know that waste actually is something which no longer suited for its intended use. So when we say waste, it is it is an outcome. Uh, excuse me. So waste, when we talk about the waste, it's an outcome of, uh, 
it's an outcome of product or substance that is no longer suited for its intended use. So we don't want that. Uh, uh, we don't want that any uh, anymore. So it's a outcome of a product or a substance that no longer suited for its intended use. So once you start, once you are thinking of discarding the waste, if you are thinking of uh, you had a product, for example, if you think about electronic waste, you had an old mobile phone. Think about that Nokia 1500, 2000 rupees phone, which was pretty good actually. I still have one. So it, you charge it once and it, you don't have to charge it for almost four or five days. But say I, I, you got tired of that, those kind of phone and that one, one fine day you decided to get rid of that. Until you decided to get rid of that, it's not a waste. The day, the moment you decide that, okay, I don't want it anymore, you threw it in the trash can or you gave it to some uh, person, uh, you basically, you discarded it, you may have given it to a uh, kabadiwala or old e-waste uh, uh, refurbisher. So as, as soon as it lifts your position, uh, you have discarded that, it becomes an electronic waste. So that's, uh, so it's, an, it's, a, it's a product or a substance that is no longer suited for its intended use. So whatever what is intended use, it's no longer suited. So you are just, you, for you, it doesn't have any more value left. So that becomes an waste. So when we talk about waste, it could be a hazardous waste, it could be a non-hazardous waste. Depending on the constituents which is there in electronics, uh, if you just go by the presence of those uh, heavy metals and other stuff, and if you do this uh, TCLP test, which is done to find out whether a waste is a hazardous waste or not, e-waste does fail uh, TCLP for lead for most part. And we'll talk about that uh, in this course as well. I'll give you an example of uh, the different uh, uh, tests that is being done. So e-waste does fail TCLP test. Now, uh, for for the sake of uh, promoting recycling of electronic waste, many countries, including in India, we have decided not to put electronic waste in the category of hazardous waste. Because when you put something in a category of hazardous waste, it has to, it becomes very stringent rules and regulation. So if you want to promote e-waste recycling, we want that industry to be a bit relaxed, like not as they have, doesn't have to go through all the, the stringent regulation of hazardous waste management. So they have been put under a category basically exempted from the definition of hazardous waste. So it's, uh, it's, it's to promote the recycling of uh, different components which is present in electronic waste. But part of it could be hazardous and uh, of course any waste it could be hazardous, it could be non-hazardous. And why we would say if in the big picture when we talk about waste management or in particular on electronic waste management, the reason we are worried about that is because of the impact on human health and the environment. Ultimately, say recently, if you had followed news just uh, in um, just like a few, like a couple of months ago, uh, and the problem kind of uh, persists over the winter period. In many may, many winters, we see that wherein uh, you will have uh, issues of uh, a smoke and uh, fog getting together, making a smoke. And if you remember in Delhi, we had that even odd uh, scheme. Some people may have liked it, some people may not, but that's a different matter. But why we had to go for that scheme is because of the air pollution issues. Because of, again, uh, this year as well, like this part, this winter as well, we had that uh, even in the month of November, uh, we started having the issues of, uh, of uh, this uh, uh, like a smoke uh, if you remember just few months back in the month of november when we were uh, in november 2017 uh, the government in delhi was saying that it's a public health emergency so why we say again it's all since it's a it's an impact on human health it's impact on environment when we say impact on environment it's impact on water soil air land so that's that's uh, that's that also relates to our human health or uh, like health to us or health to plants, health to the uh, vegetables and fruits that we will eat. So, so that's the reason why we are worried about it. We don't want the earth to be polluted and the electronic waste has several heavy metals present in them, which is a cause of concern. So that's the reason why this course is. So why the, if you, as again, in every course and every lecture that I take, in the first few lectures, I keep on stressing out to the students, you should always try to understand why we are why why there is a course why why we should even study electronic waste management 
So once you have that clear, then you will have developed the curiosity to learn more. You will be interested in this particular course. Otherwise, don't take any course just for the sake of taking the course. If you're taking a course, try to understand, try to learn something. So the reason we are interested in electronic waste is because electronic waste management, if done in an improper way, may lead to several contamination in terms of air pollution, in terms of water pollution, in terms of soil pollution. And all these is going to affect us, which is the human health, and also the environment. When we say environment, it's all the flora, fauna, biodiversity, and all that that we talk about. So that's and then big picture, global warming, climate change, and all those things. But we'll we'll not go to this right now. Maybe in the fourth, we'll we'll talk about when we talk about this life cycle analysis and all that. So if we don't handle it properly, it has a threat to human health and environment. That's what I was trying to explain, and. Uh, there are several waste categories. We have industrial waste, we have biomedical waste, uh, we have uh, uh, waste from, we have industrial, biomedical, electronic and electrical equipments. They are the example of the categories which could be harmful. And then uh, there is, uh, there are national laws. So we have the electronic waste law as well. We have the e-waste law which uh, uh, we need to uh, follow. So electronic waste law is there which uh, we will be uh, talking about in the class. We had a e-waste uh, rule earlier and uh, in, uh, which was revised recently last year in 20, uh, two years ago, uh, 2016, uh, one and a half year ago, 2016 it was revised. So we'll talk about both the previous uh, law as well as what was the new things which was added to the revision. We'll talk about that uh, in this particular course. So, so what is so be, be, say it's kind of I gave you some idea of what is electronic waste, but now look let's look at what the different literature defines electronic waste. So we'll look at what is the definition from the European Union, what is the definition from some of the other researchers who have been working in this field. So let's look at what are the definition and we'll look at some of the examples. In next few slides, we'll talk about uh, uh, definition and example. So uh, when you look at these slides, don't worry too much about having uh, the reason. See, there was, I was thinking about when we were preparing these slides, should I include all the details here or just I put some bullet points and leave it at there and just talk about it. The reason I decided to put a more detail over here as you can see on this particular slide is unfortunately there is uh, not many books out there on electronic waste and I, so I want you to get some information on electronic waste so I put some more text here. I'm not going to read this text in the in, in this lecture video. I want you to read it. So we'll make make these slides available to you so that you can uh, uh, go over these slides as a reading material as well. So since and I'll provide you some additional reading material too. But these slides will be provided to you as a reading material. So but if you think about what is electronic waste, it's a it's essentially coming from the electronic devices. It could be large household appliances such as refrigerators, air conditioners, cell phones, personal studios, consumer electronics to computers which have been discarded by their user. So it's a broad category. If you think about the European Union, anything which has a circuit is electronic waste. Anything which has electrical circuits is a electronic waste. So they include refrigerators, uh, dishwashers, uh, washing machines, everything is there. In, if you go to uh, North America, in the US definition, US and Canada definition, electronic waste does not include these white goods. What are white goods? White goods are your refrigerators, the fridge that we call it, or the fridge, refrigerator, uh, dishwasher, and uh, all those uh, like microwaves and other stuff. They, they are called white goods. Why they are called white goods? Again, again, uh, for everything, ask the why question. One thing I really, uh, I would like to stress again and again, you will probably hear me saying that many times over these four weeks, is that always ask questions. Don't get, don't just take things the, that way that, okay, somebody has said that it is, it has to be like that. And that's true for anything in your life. Always ask questions. For example, why? Say I said, this North America calls it white goods. How, why, why white goods? What is, because if you remember refrigerators, dishwashers, uh, microwaves, your washing machines, when they came to the market for the first time, all of them were white in color. So that's the reason they are called white goods. It's, it's so simple, isn't it? It's a kind of, it's a trivial. But it, many times we just say, 
so maybe they say that there may be some reason but we should know that too is it uh, it's it's always better to know as a child always we have lots of curiosity when a small child will ask you have if you have a small child at your home or your near like a nephew niece or in a neighborhood you see that he or she will ask you lots and lots of questions unfortunately our schooling system is such a way that by the time we, we we go to the primary school and secondary school we stop asking questions especially in the ug undergraduate students don't ask any questions because they are so much pressurized they think that if i ask questions and if it's a dumb question what impression i will have especially if it's a co-ed school people are worried about what that uh, somebody else will think about me they will think that i'm a dumb forget about that if you want to learn something ask question even asking dumb question is not bad just ask questions so that you can learn so when i'm saying ask questions here since it's a video lecture it's an online course for you to ask question go to the discussion forum so we'll have it is we have discussion forum as i explained to you in the intro video as well go to the discussion forum ask questions i promise you that discussion forum questions will be answered within 24 hours we'll try our best to answer you in 24 hours maybe some day we may be a little bit late here and there depending on if a lot of other things are going on but in general we'll get back to you within 24 hours if you had a uh, question on the discussion forum it could don't worry if it's a dumb question ask the question and uh, you you may be thinking it's a dumb question but it may not be it may be a very good question so go ahead and ask question that that will help you to learn and that's why we have a ta helping with this course as well to help with the logistics of taking care of discussion board and other things uh, so go ahead and uh, don't worry about uh, asking uh, too many questions that is we will be happy if you ask many questions so coming back here so it's in uh, so it's uh, it's defined as uh, even the any waste equipment any waste equipment which is dependent on the electric current or electromagnetic field to work properly and for the voltage rating not exceeding 1000 volts if it becomes more than 1000 volts it uh, becomes a heavy duty machine so we don't usually we don't manage it in a uh, regular electronic waste that becomes like an a special item so 1000 volts for uh, for the ac current and 1500 volts for dc and that's the uh, from towns in 2011 which is a review paper very nice review paper it's in the air air and waste management association journal uh, which uh, this review paper you can find it over there so this is how and this uh, kind of follows more of a european union definition here so anything which has electrical electrical current or electromagnetic field to work with is is an e waste now there was an another uh, definition uh, which uh, came out as well which says in robinson in 2009 defined e waste as any device connected to a power source that no longer satisfy the current owner uh, for which it was created so again kind of combination of the first bullet and the second bullet here where it says any device which of course uh, works with a power source uh, which is uh, kind of talked about in this one and then which is no longer current owner doesn't require it so you are basically trying to discard that so when you try to do that it becomes an electronic waste as i was explaining to you in the previous slide as well so electronic waste could be broader since it's a newer waste stream uh, in waste management in general the definition other than for the hazardous waste for non hazardous waste the definition and categories what makes a um, electronic waste what does not under comes under electronic waste it actually differs from country to country so when you are looking at different papers those of you who are uh, uh, i am assuming that since it's a kind of a specialized course uh, uh, most of uh, my students would be like final year uh, btech or uh, my masters students or maybe phd students or professors working at a different universities so uh, different uh, colleges so it's a it's a specialized area so uh, when you if you are trying to go into any any research in this particular area so when you for doing any research you need to learn you need to read lot of literature so when you read lot of literature be sure of where that literature is coming from if it's coming from the european union it will follow a different definition of electronic waste if it comes from india it will follow a different definition of electronic waste india is trying to match with the electronic european union definition and if you are if you are in north america the definition may be different so be careful with uh, what uh, definition you are looking at because uh, the definition might vary from uh, from one paper to another paper and then if you are try to compare these different papers together uh, you may not be comparing the same thing it may be different things so it's not a what we call not a apple to apple comparison so you may be unfair 
uh, in making those comparisons. So make sure you understand where the study was done and uh, how to take care of uh, uh, those uh, uh, like the details. So that's uh, what we were looking at in terms of the electronic waste. Now to continue a little bit further, we'll look at some of the uh, examples as well. Uh, so it's the why again. It kind of goes into why we should. Uh, look at with the because of the presence of deadly chemicals and toxic substances in the electronic gadgets its disposal of e-waste is becoming an environmental and health like when we say health it's a human health it's a human human health you're talking about the human health so it's a human health nightmare so and the other big problem that we are having right now is globally only 15 to 20 percent of e-waste is recycled only 15 to 20 percent of e-waste is being recycled Let's uh, only 15 to 20 percent of e-waste is recycled, while in while the rest is being dumped into many developing countries such as India, China, and Nigeria. So there is a illegal dumping, illegal dumping of e-waste in the name of recycling, in the name of uh, uh, sending uh, old electronics, old computers for the poor schools in developing countries. We are getting a lot of electronic waste coming into the country. So it's, there is a check on that. China now is actually put, putting a more check. India is also, people, there are a lot of NGOs and we are now people are more, uh, uh, try, more vigilant in terms of these activities. But there are people in, within our country who wants to get these electronic waste to process them and try to recover some, of, some money out of there. So there is a lot of e-waste coming in and I'll, I will talk about that, how e-waste travels globally. So by, this year, by the last year, which is a 2017, People, uh, it was said that people will, people have discarded, may have, dis this was, this study was done a little while ago, so that's kind of projects that. So it's 92 billion pounds of e-waste per year, equivalent to the 126 Empire State Building. So that's uh, so much of electronic waste. So if you took the electronic waste of the, uh, of uh, uh, the world and put it in the Empire State Building, you will need 126 of them. So that's a lot of uh, uh, buildings you will require. So e-waste, it's a big problem and uh, it's a lot of things needs to be ha handled uh, in, in terms of electronic waste. So let's, uh, we'll try to, uh, in terms of, we'll try to look at uh, how to classify. So it's a big problem. I think you understand by this time. Uh, we, I try to give you some definition of electronic waste. Uh, some of the why it is big problem. There are a lot of toxic chemicals and we'll, we'll go into details of each one of those uh, uh, subsequently. But in terms of, uh, before we get into the problem, always you have a big problem, you try to divide it into a smaller. So that's called classification. So you're trying to put it into different categories. So here we'll be trying to classify electronic waste as uh, some, well, one is a temperature change. You are trying to change the temperature. That's a temperature change equipment. Uh, that's uh, one, such as cooling and freezing equipment, so refrigerators, freezers, air conditioners, heat pumps. So that's your uh, uh, temperature and cooling uh, equipment right there. Then you may have a screen, monitors, television, laptops, tablets. So that's uh, another uh, things in there, like it's, that's your display devices. Uh, lamps, such as fluorescent lamp, compact CF, CFL, LED lamps. So those are also electronic waste. So these are all different classifications of, uh, of e-waste. And uh, going further, you, you can even classify it as a large equipment. We can call it a large equipment. It could be a large equipment such as washing machine, cloth dryer, dishwasher, large printing machine, copying equipment, photovoltaics panels. There could be a small equipment, vacuum cleaner, microwaves, ventilation. You walk into any house today, you find lots and lots of gadgets and most of it is electronics. You go into a kitchen, uh, there will be a microwave, there will be a, uh, there might be a many times a separate microwave, separate oven oven toaster griller, what we call OTG. There might be some blenders. Uh, you will have a mixy and uh, of course your uh, uh, some other uh, stuff uh, over there as well. Juicer and uh, food processor and uh, so and some grinders. So you just in the kitchen and then you get, go down the kitchen, go to the drawing room, again several things, TV, computers, PDAs, laptop, uh, iPad, mo mobile phones, several mobile phones, air conditioners. So you think about that, we use electronics, like the, the media that I'm using right now, like I'm teaching you from a, using a computer, so that's an electronics. 
We, this is getting recorded on a camera, which is another electronics, and things will be processed on electronic equipment, and it will be put on, you are watching it on an electronic product too, whether it's your laptop or your desktop, or a, so it's, we are using lots and lots of electronics, and that's the way the life is. We cannot just go back and not use any electronics. So what, what is needed is, let's try to manage so that when, when the life of the electronics goes away, the, and that unfortunately the life is also getting decreasing. Earlier if you buy a, a computer you try to hold on to it for a longer period of time but these days because of the change in technology, new, uh, once you have Windows 10 then there will be new Windows, the new kind of softwares, older system will not work, you need more giga RAM, you have more RAM, more hard disk, so all these things forces us to buy new com new computers pretty soon. So around two, two to half to three years is kind of what is estimated a typical life of a uh, laptop or a desktop. Even laptop would be kind of maybe lower than that, and uh, cell phones is even much lower than that. So it's uh, so this will this is leading to more and more production of electronic waste. And because of presence of all those heavy metals, which we'll talk about, we have to manage it properly. It's a human health impact, environmental impact, and as well as the same time, it's a good resource. We can use that electronics uh, waste and recover a lot of heavy, lot of material from there, uh, which could be a good job uh, making uh, industry uh, in in the country. So, coming back to here in terms of the category that we were looking at, so we have the we talked about the large equipment. There are a small equipment. Then you may have a small IT and telecommunication, for example, mobile phone, GPS, pocket calculators, routers and all those things uh, that we use uh, for our day to day uh, working. So same thing, uh, just presented in uh, some sort of uh, pictures for you to understand a little bit quicker. So we'll go over these slides a little bit faster, next three slides. So it could be large household appliances, as you can see over here, uh, you can have a large household appliance. So this is your large household appliances where uh, refrigerators, those uh, uh, like a oven, uh, that uh, washing machine, microwave, uh, fridges, so those are your large uh, e equipment. Then you may have ICT, what is, uh, we hear a lot about ICT, information and communication technology equipment, so you have uh, all these uh, stuff, uh, computers, computer peripherals, video games, consoles, and all those things are your uh, uh, copying equipment, those are our uh, uh, information and communication. Then we can have consumer electronics, which could be uh, your, uh, uh, saver, uh, your uh, clock, some uh, uh, projectors, pointers, uh, cameras, uh, so those uh, coffee machines, clocks, watches, hair dryers, savers, so they becomes consumer electronics. So there are different, uh, again, different types of uh, electronic uh, items and when they are discarded, they become all, all of them will become part of the waste. Next, uh, it's if you look at another Another classification is could be uh, we have large household appliances, small household appliances, then we can have electrical, electrical and electrical toys. So that's another way of uh, uh, defining is we have electrical and electronic toys. So that's your uh, uh, where we have drills, saws, sewing machines, those are our other uh, category out there. Then we can also define uh, them in terms of consumer equipment, so TV, radio, video camera. So these are our, uh, uh, this is our uh, consumer equipments. Then we could have some lightning and also as well as fans and other stuff, toys, lasers and sports equipment. So you can divide, you can put it under different classification. Again, it depends on how you want to categorize them. Same item can be put into different categories. So in terms of here we have CFL, sodium vapor lamp, fans, switches, wires, so those are your lighting equipment, toys, laser, computers, phones, again videos. Here also you can have video cameras, amplifiers, TV and radio. So you can put them into different categories and that's what you will see when you start looking at uh, different literature, uh, when uh, you, uh, when we'll supply you with some information on uh, electronic waste, which you'll see the different reports from different parts of the world, you see the definitions, uh, classification do change. That's why I wanted you to uh, see these examples so that uh, you don't get surprised when you see that some report calls it one way, the other report calls it the other way. It's just the way people want to put it. So another uh, medical devices, we didn't talk about that. So medical device, uh, so all the, you walk into any hospital these days, ICU and all, there are lots of things that is being used in uh, those, uh, those uh, medical, uh, medical places like hospitals 
and other places like radiology, uh, cardiology, neurology, dialysis, all these equipments are electronics. Then we have some monitoring equipment like fire alarms, uh, smoke detectors, thermostats, ATM, coffee vendors. So all these uh, are again uh, another category. So those things are all part of uh, electronics and when they get discarded, they all become part of electronic waste. So that's, uh, so in terms of uh, composition of electronic waste and this composition is from the electronic waste produced in, in India. So we are uh, looking at, uh, we collected some data from the Indian uh, scenario and this is uh, slightly older data. So I think in the next slide we'll show you the newer data. So that's why we are uh, calling it this as a previous scenario. When we say previous scenario, actually this is the data which is uh, from the older uh, literature. So you will see when you see the both slides and then you will understand why I'm calling it previous and what, why I'm calling it newer. So if you, if you pay attention to this table and then we'll look at the pie chart, let's look at the table. So here we are talking about different categories like ferrous metal, non-ferrous metal, plastics, glass and some others which is present. So others means which doesn't, uh, does not include in these uh, categories over there. So ferrous is iron and steel, non-ferrous of course aluminum, copper, lead, cadmium, mercury, gold, a lot of things, arsenic, selenium, palladium, all those things. Plastic, there could be a brominated or non-brominated. Brominated plastics is with the brominated flame retardants, which is to keep it uh, not getting heated, not getting uh, uh, catch fire. Because when you look, uh, if when, even if you worked with your laptop, uh, putting in your lap, you may have felt that after half an hour or 40 minutes, it gets really hot sometimes. If it gets hot, the things inside may catch fire. So those plastics may catch fire, which is there inside. So this brominated flame retardant containing plastic, they keep the, it's a fire retardant. So it's a, it doesn't let uh, the fire to propagate. So that's, uh, it keeps it uh, uh, low. So that's the reason why it's a brominated or non-brominated, depending on where the plastic is being used. It could be either of, either one of those. Uh, glass, it could be leaded glass where lead is also part of that or normal glass. So those are the, all these different compositions. So now you understand what is the different categories. So let's look at the pie chart. So when you look at the pie chart, when we say glass is around 15%, others is 7%, ferrous metal 36, non-ferrous 19 and plastic is 23. So now remem remember the, these two numbers, ferrous metal 36, plastic 23. And with these two numbers, keeping that in mind, Let's look at the next slide why, and uh, you will understand why I want you to look at the next slide keeping those two numbers in mind as uh, you can, so okay, I, let's look at this first and then we'll come back to that slide before because I want you to see this slide. So if you remember the, from the earlier, ferrous was higher and plastic was less. Now if you look at in terms of the small household appliances, this is the latest data. When I say present scenario, like it's also like almost two years old. So here, if you look at the ferrous metal is 29% and plastic is 38%. Here, the ferrous metal is 36% and the plastic is also catching up at 30%. So it's, if you look at the difference between the plastics here, plastic has already overtaken uh, ferrous metal and here the difference has narrowed down. So what is happening is, we are replacing this ferrous metal by different kind of plastic. That's why the electronics are getting lighter. Now, why it is important? It is important because when we, when we were looking at the lead chemistry, looking at the heavy metal chemistry, in the presence of iron, the heavy metal chemistry, the other heavy metals which is present in electronics, it's a bit different when the iron is not present the chemistry gets a little bit different, uh, chemistry changes a bit. So we'll talk about uh, that in a later, uh, probably in second or third week. But remember that, that newer electronics is having less ferrous, more plastic. And that's why it is becoming lighter as well. It becomes much, uh, much less uh, heavy as compared to others. And we have other categories uh, in terms of we have ferrous plastic, then we have uh, non-ferrous, we have glass. Similarly here, we have non-ferrous and glass as well. So we skipped one slide. So let's go look at, and look at that slide and then we'll close this particular module. So let's go back there. And this is, uh, okay, let's. Yes, we missed this one. So in terms of uh, composition of e-waste, in terms uh, the same thing that you looked at earlier. So if you look at uh, different types of uh, uh, product, so large, if you ferrous, again, we are looking at the same category, ferrous, non-ferrous, plastic and glass. 
So large household appliances more ferrous kind of makes sense you when you compare to a small household like large household appliances have big more more steel more iron there and uh, a city also has that uh, non ferrous is pretty much the same in these two categories it's much lower here and also lamps has non ferrous as well plastics uh, small household appliances has more plastic compared to the large household large household as you know it's a bigger it's a bigger structured so it needs more stability so that's why you have more metal that's why you have more ferrous there and then you have a 30 percent and then 3.7 in lamps not much plastic over there but uh, most uh, lamps mostly it's a glass 77 percent glass here we have around 20 percent glass and then glass is much lower in these two categories then there are some others category totally it adds up to around 100 percent so this work was done in june 2011 that's why it was part of that uh, previous uh, scenario not the latest scenario the latest data that i produced that i showed you into the next slide the just uh, slide before uh, this one uh, this slide it's actually data collected over last two years so things are changing our electronic product is changing so in this module if you have uh, what is the take home message so after every every video this uh, in this particular course i will try to summarize it in a briefly in a minute and to basically like a, what is the important point in the important point for this particular video is we looked at what is electronic waste how to define it definition changes depending on where you are in which part of the globe uh, European Union, North America, India definition may, dif may differ. So you need to look at the, you, you need to be careful about that. And the nature there are, you can classify electronic waste into different categories. And once you classify into different, the, the, how you do the classification, that's also there is no uniformity. People may do it in a different way. And then at the same time, but the bottom line is that all these electronics, the reason why we are worried about them because of the presence of a large amount of heavy metals. and the heavy metals could be recovered and could be brought back to economy so that will be a uh, one option and if you don't uh, re that's called like a recycling re recycling and recovery and if you don't do it we put it in a dump site or put goes in an informal sector where things are not managed properly we, we may end up damaging lots of uh, environmental damages human health damages and that's why the concern in terms of the electronic waste electronic products are changing becoming more lighter and lighter more plastic less and uh, less metal and of course, the product leads to discarded products is the waste. So the waste composition is also changing. The waste composition is also dynamic. As you will see, like a, even if you just think about your cell phone, because everybody rel can relate to their cell phone, the cell phone design, cell phone uh, uh, things keeps on changing so fast. So of course, when it three, four years down the line, when the cell phone comes into the disposal stream, it, it will again, it, it will have an impact on what, what, how the composition of disposal stream will be. Number one product in terms of disposal stream for electronic waste in few years from now is going to be cell phone. So right now it could be the CPUs or the laptops which is leading the pack, but down the line, three, four, five years down the line, the prediction is the prediction is that it is the cell phone which will be the number one component in terms of the discarded electronic products. So with that, let's uh, close this video. I will see you again in the next video. Again, discussion board is there, ask questions and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer. And I look forward to uh, seeing, receiving your uh, comments, queries, and other stuff through the discussion board. Thank you.